Julius Thank you. Kozuski. Did I say that closely enough? Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Close enough. Um, <laughs> we'll be discussing white holes in quantum gravity. Thank you. Take it away. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a bit of a perverse topic. Of course, we are all interested in black holes in quantum gravity, but white holes? Why on earth? Uh, so here's the plan. I will give you a brief kind of intro to white holes and um, certain theoretical scheme in quantum gravity which makes use of white holes. Discuss white holes in classical and quantum GR a little bit and draw an interesting philosophical consequence uh, from that. And if we have enough time, I will make two additional observations. The first one is fun, the second one is potentially interesting. Uh, so, uh, what is a white hole? It's probably just a reminder for most of you. So, uh, classical GR is invariant under time reversal in the following sense. Take a time orientable space, time MG, with a chosen temporal orientation and just change all the past pointing vectors to be the future pointing vectors and vice versa. So the result is a new space-time M and G prime. And what this means is that change of temporal orientation of a model of GR takes you to some usually non-equivalent model in GR, model of GR. And now if you do this op operation of change of temporal orientation to a space-time containing a black hole with a, with a metric described in a black hole, you get a white hole. So how should you think about a white hole? So loosely speaking, instead of a kind of gravitational collapse of ordinary matter, which is sort of um, imploding to massive something with horizon, which pulls in matter and contains singularities to the future, and the horizon is such that once you're sufficiently close, or once you cross the horizon, you can never leave. That's the black hole case. Uh, for a white hole, you have massive something with horizon, which is such that you cannot send any information through the horizon to the interior of a white hole, which sort of spits out matter, has past singularity, and at some point, presumably, kind of disappears by transition to ordinary matter, uh, which is... Uh, kind of the time reverse of your uh, usual collapsing shell. So uh, that's it for white, about white holes for now. The second component which will be important for this talk is something called black hole fireworks. But it, goes, it also goes by other names. I think Planck stars is the most popular one these days. And so the idea is here that uh, we can kind of uh, do something similar as loop quantum gravity people do in uh, cosmological quantum band scenarios, except you do that to late stages of black hole evaporation. So uh, uh, what happens here is that you have uh, your classical black hole, it semi-classically evaporates, and then uh, one postulates that there is um, uh, a period during which additional non-perturbative quantum gravitational effects kick in. This is represented as finite region R, and those effects lead to kind of repulsive bounds. So I think this idea was first worked out by uh, Haggard and Rovelli in uh, 2015 and, for, and so on. Um, and Apparently, it's a, it's a very active uh, field these days, to the point where there is a dedicated uh, review paper to you know, black to white hole transitions. So it's, it's something that apparently quite a few theorists are interested in. So uh, the, the tricky thing about this is that repulsive bounds is represented by the time reverse of your original solution. So uh, the life of a black hole looks kind of like this. We have formation, we have semi-classical evaporation, then we have those additional effects kicking in, then we have the white hole phase because we have to glue time reverse of the uh, original solution, and then we have explosion into ordinary matter. And there are suggestions uh, that uh, uh, fast radio bursts can be uh, explained by uh, this sort of explosion if you had uh, 
kind of primordial black hole uh, uh, for which this kind of black to white hole tunneling thing happens. But it's also, um, or perhaps primarily, uh, um, important if you're interested in foundational questions concerning singularities. Because uh, what happens here is that, uh, um, of course, we have singularity in the initial black hole region and in the same classical black hole region. Then we have new region R, and once the followed by the white hole. Now, once we leave the white hole phase, the singularity is not there anymore. So, in a sense, lifetime of the singularity hidden behind the horizons is finite. So, uh, if all of this is right, we can get rid of singularity. What will be important for uh, the rest of my talk is that uh, I will be using time symmetric version of black hole fireworks. And what I mean by time symmetry here is that once I'm in this new additional region R and I wonder what should I glue to the future, I will always be gluing uh, exact time reverse of the solution I had so far. And most of the applications of black hole fireworks are done in time symmetric way. There, there's only one or two papers which try to break uh, the symmetry. But I think it's really important that we have to break it. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, if you come from classical GR, you probably know that white holes are extremely problematic objects. And there are kind of three groups of issues. The first is that white holes are unseen. We have never observed mm, anything which is mm, most adequately modeled by white hole solution. So this leads you to questions concerning asymmetry of time uh, and kind of asymmetry between um, useful and and no, not so useful solutions of GR. Why would such a huge proportion of models of GR be uh, useless as a physical description, whereas the time reverses, uh, think they kind of time reverse counterparts are useful? Uh, of course, black hole, uh, m black hole metrics are very useful, white hole metrics, presumably not so much. So how do we explain that? And Another question is whether this asymmetry is somewhat different from asymmetries we have in other physical theories. And I think it's qualitatively new. Uh, now, you can try to use a uh, um, certain feature of white holes uh, uh, instability to explain why we do not see anything like a white hole. So uh, in the mid 70s, early, has shown that, uh, mm, and it's an analysis which was kind of corrected and improved in subsequent works by those authors. But basically what happens is that if you have a white hole, uh, you will have, uh, if, and if you have some kind of non-vanishing external matter content, you will have accretion disk forming around the white hole. And this will very quickly lead to gravitational collapse. So this goes under the name death of white holes. Uh, in the literature, because uh, mm, because if you have a white hole, it very quickly transitions to a black hole. And so, uh, um, if you imagine a situation in which you have some initial distributions of black hole state of, of black holes and of white holes, you could try to explain asymmetry. That is the fact that we do not observe anything like a white hole sufficiently like, far into the future uh, using instability. Uh, the second group of issues uh, has to do with determinism and indeterminism. Uh, so here's uh, Roger Penrose uh, on white hole. The future behavior of a white hole does not in any sensible way seem to be determined by its past. In particular, the precise moment at which the white hole explodes into ordinary matter seems to be entirely of its own choosing, being unpredictable by the use of normal laws of physics. So this indeterminism, to me, seems to be a kind of multiple allowed by the theory continuations kind of indeterminism. So something like your favorite philosophical Laplacian account, in a sense. 
fix an initial space-time region containing the white hole, and now ask yourself, okay, how many continuations of that region exist? And there are plenty. You can explode immediately, continue for some time, and then explode, or perhaps never explode. And the theory kind of doesn't tell us which one should we uh, pick uh, for the Cisco situation. Uh, so in the Classical or yeah. uh, that's all classical, yes. Okay. Like either initial hypersurface, like if you Schwarz root, initial hypersurface, very close point. Mm -hmm. Extended Kruskal diagram, taking an initial hypersurface that goes to the white hole region. Yeah. That data there fully determine the classical solution. Well, mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's presumably highly model dependent, right? Yeah, like anything, but once you give me the data. Right, in this, in this particular case, I think, I think that's right. But if you think of white hole in general as a time reverse of gravitational collapse, uh, sure. so you have a situation when you have a, you have a, when you have a white hole with past singularity extended indefinitely far to the future, so you kind of have white hole up to here. Now what do you do next? Let me say it in other words. Taking the hypersurface. Mm -hmm. Evolve data to the past or evolve data to the future. Yeah. It's the same. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you will have you, you, you will you, you, you will have you, you will have singularity and Hoshi horizon. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Take extended in that particular case, but this will not be the case for general uh, time reverses of the collapse. Take your general anything. Take your general hypersurface. Yeah. Is it forward or about backwards? One is a solution yeah. that produces a white hole, but that had a white hole, one is a solution that had a black hole. Yeah. But then still the question remains. So imagine that you have uh, observer traveling uh, in the vicinity of a white hole. And now how does the observer go about determining at which moment uh, you have an emergent shell from the white hole? If you think in terms of uh, time reverse of gravitational collapse. To make any prediction in data and Cauchy surfaces. That's true also for, for, the, for the black hole. Yeah, Sorry, I right. Right, and so uh, since, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if, I, if, you're, if you're happy with my answer now. Let's come back at the end. Then. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, indeterminism in white holes is also related to issue of naked singularities and some versions of cosmic censorship hypothesis. So many authors uh, take uh, white holes to be nakedly singular. Uh, things. And if you, uh, um, if you trust uh, John Ehrman's um, mm, kind of assessment of naked singularities, uh, you, will, you are led to believe that the problem with naked singularities is that all sorts of nasty things, TV sets showing Nixon's checkers speech, green slime, Japanese uh, horror movie monsters, etc., emerge helter-skelter from this singularity. And this is uh, something you also have in white hole space-time, because uh, you have a singularity uh, extending indefinitely far to the past, but not indefinitely far to the future. So at some point, the singularity disappears, and the question is, okay, so what will come out of that? Uh, so you can, you can think of this as uh, an, another explication of uh, of the indeterminism uh, we just uh, talked about. Uh, a digression is that the uh, concept of naked singularity is tricky, and it is usually restricted to future-directed incomplete curves. Uh, and under this standard restriction, white holes are not nakedly singular, contrary to most of the literature. Uh, and there are many multiple points at which uh, people say certain things about white holes, which if you think about it carefully, are just not true. So it's one of those. 
And the third group of issues has to do with uh, thermodynamics. Um, so uh, some people seem to believe that Whitehall's violates second law or generalized second law of the horizon thermodynamics because the area of uh, uh, fut future, fu um, as you go to the future area of the horizon of a white hole, uh, is non increasing. So it can stay constant or become smaller. Uh, simply because the area of the horizon of a classical black hole is non decreasing as you go to the future. Uh, and presumably, one could try to come up with uh, some sort of no good result against white holes and also um, black to white hole tunneling scenarios uh, if you trust into uh, generalized second law uh, enough. So uh, here is an advice on what you should think about white holes in classical GR. Uh, first, that white holes are more tricky than it is usually presented, as uh, my example of the notion of a naked singularity shows. Uh, and that I think that uh, because white holes are unseen, some of those foundational issues are not really that important to you. They're not really that pressing. You don't need to take to, to worry so much about indeterminism and naked singularities and violation of second law in white hole space times because you have no reason to expect that anything like that will ever be realized. Uh, so relative importance of those foundational questions is, mm, is kind of low. Uh, but some other features, uh, like asymmetry between black and white hole solutions and the fact that white holes are unseen calls for an explanation. Uh, the situation changes if you uh, trust into the black hole fireworks scheme I described earlier. Because then unseen is no longer an issue because certain phenomena um, like uh, late stages uh, of lifetime of primordial black hole are actually modeled as white holes. Asymmetry stays uh, because we know that black holes tunnels into white holes, but mm, at least under the time symmetric version I described, not the other way around. And also we have plenty of <coughs> black holes kind of flying around us, not so many white holes. So you have to say something about uh, that asymmetry. And I imagine that you will also have a serious, serious problems with indeterminism and lack of second law, and perhaps also with uh, seemingly, seeming violation of uh, some versions of cosmic censorship, if you trust in the tunneling scenario, insofar as uh, you have reason to believe that white holes uh, violate cosmic censorship. Uh, so all of this has, I think, an interesting philosophical consequence. Uh, imagine that you are in a state of mind when you draw a divide between space times, which are useful physical representations of the way space time could be, and those which are physically unreasonable. So you praise some space times and you slur some other space times. Uh, now, uh, white holes are an example of how such a division line could change when additional hypothetical quantum gravita gravitational mechanisms are postulated. Not only space times with white holes suddenly land on the physically reasonable side of the divide, but also relative importance of those various physical features uh, gets shifted. And I think it's an interesting philosophical consequence that um, white holes and black hole fireworks give us, provides us with an example of how acceptance of a hypothetical uh, quantum gravitational scenario forces us to revise certain uh, interpretational moves uh, uh, we do in classical GR. Nick, how much time do I have? Um, about another 15 minutes, a little bit more. That's excellent. Uh, so now uh, I will make the fun observations about white holes. And it will be about the, what I call white hole splitters. <laughs> so uh, um, consider um, binary black hole system colliding. Uh, so in that system, you have two, initially you have two uh, black holes and you have a merger event during which single black hole is formed. And some amount of energy is emitted as gravitational wave. So just like your basic LIGO-like uh, setup. Uh, so schematically, we have a sequence of metrics with two black holes converging to a metric with a single black hole. And this sequence is uh, the space-time metric we are interested in. Uh, 
I say it very easily, like the space-time metric describing black hole merger, mm. but it's really highly non-trivial to uh, pr write down anything resembling a space-time metric uh, in, the, in my standard M and G kind of sense describing black hole merger, but I assume that it can be done. So now a merger can be thought of as a process which takes you from the first, from the kind of state, uh, uh, physical state where we have first black hole and the second black hole to the final black hole uh, plus emitted energy, very loosely speaking. And during that process, uh, we, have, uh, we have the following relation that mass of the first black hole plus mass of the second black hole is equal to the mass of the final black hole plus emitted energy. So again, like or like. Uh, now, uh, if I can assume that I have a space-time metric this type in black hole merger, I can also take a time reverse of it, right? Uh, because that space-time metric will also be a space-time metric. So this is what I will call a white hole splitter. Uh, and now I, I will argue that if black holes can tunnel into white holes, uh, then some black holes can tunnel into white hole splitters. Uh, and the recipe is very simple. Start with a binary black hole system, merge it to a single black hole, then you wait a bit until it stabilizes after the ring down phase, and now assume that you get approximately partial black hole, and I only make this for convenience reason. So as far as I know, all those schemes for black to white hole tunneling so far have only been applied to approximately Schwarzschild solutions. Uh, but presumably they should generalize, so then this argument should also generalize. Uh, but assume that after the stabilization you have approximately Schwarzschild black hole. So now you have operated. And then at some point, you know that it can tunnel uh, into white hole through this additional uh, region R. Uh, and now uh, the recipe for black hole fireworks tells me, well, all right, so I'm in the region R, I know what the exterior metric will look like, uh, and, but to the future of region R, I have to glue exact time reverse of everything I had so far. And now, uh, since we have started with a merger, we should continue with a splitter. Uh, you could ask, wait, wait, wait. So could I also do that for a single black hole? So I have a single black hole, I'm kind of in this region R, and now what should I glue? Like in general, could I glue a splitter to a single thing? And yeah, in general, I don't see why not, but uh, here's a curious feature of white hole splitters. Uh, if you think of this, again, in terms of process plus uh, kind of mass conservation uh, thing, we have uh, a process which takes us from initial white hole uh, plus time reverse of the emitted energy, which is really strange, to the final state with two white holes. And we have, of course, the analog, uh, analogous relation between masses. So it seems that uh, instead of gravitational waves emitted from the major event, in a splitter event, you have something which kind of sucks in energy from the environment uh, it's kind of like you have uh, converging gravitational waves uh, onto your uh, source um, instead of emitted gravitational waves. And so this, it seems like you can sort of provide enough energy into a white hole and overcharge it and make it split. Uh, which is, I think, quite mysterious and perhaps it's just an artifact of uh, the symmetry or the time reversal symmetry. Uh, it's mysterious because uh, we have pretty good reasons to uh, expect that black, hole mer black holes merge because they're gravitational objects interacting with each other, right? Uh, but since we presumably have also white hole versions of the Noher theorems, white hole would be uniquely parameterized by very few parameters. Uh, on the other hand, we need those converging gravitational waves to overcharge a white hole and split it, but there is no physical mechanism for that, uh, whereas we do have something like a physical mechanism uh, for the merger type event. So that's very mysterious, and I think if you have an account which uh, implies that 
you have something like a white hole splitter, I think you should uh, account for it somehow. So either tell me what, ha what is happening during the split, or tell me why I should not believe that splits are likely. Perhaps some additional effects kick in and forbid me to split or something like that. But that's another feature which I think calls for an explanation. Now the trouble is that, of course, this time symmetric black hole fireworks lead to white hole splitters, as I have argued. And there's a sense in which it leads to even more indeterminism, because if you think in terms of multiple allowed continuations, insofar as you can provide convergent waves uh, from the environment, you can kind of explode immediately, continue for some time, then explode, never explode, or split. Mm. So I guess the upshot of all this is that you either have to drop this exact time uh, symmetry in the construction, or you have to accept um, the possibility of splitter as, and something about it. All right. Uh, here's the second observation. Uh, I will be calling this black white hole oscillations. So uh, there's, there are those instability <coughs> results for white holes that I have mentioned. Uh, when we have accretion of small amounts of matter around the white hole, and that kind of leads you to gravitational collapse. This is a dynamical effect in the sense that it's primarily driven by the matter content in the exterior. So you kind of assume that you have no zero perturbation uh, in the region outside of a white hole. And very conveniently, uh, um, all the arguments for white hole instability also assume that the metric is Schwarzschild. I don't know if. I, I'm not aware of any like, mm, well worked out generalization of white hole instability results to more general types. But very conveniently, this is exactly what uh, black hole fireworks uh, scenario assumes. So it seems like uh, I have a right to apply white hole instability results in that context. So now, uh, if you take into account uh, white hole instability, how should you go about constructing the space time metric? once you are in the white hole phase outside of this additional region R. Uh, it seems that uh, because classical GR, possibly with semi-classical corrections, uh, so, so classical GR applies to early stages with semi-classical corrections to intermediate stages of the lifetime of a black hole. Uh, so it seems reasonable that I can also apply uh, classical GR with, semi -class with small corrections uh, to the white hole phase because uh, the white hole phase is basically an analog of the uh, evaporation stage. Uh, but if so, uh, I'm in a situation when I'm living uh, this uh, region with strong additional non-perturbative effects. I'm entering the white hole phase. Uh, and now the question is, all right, so what should I do? Well, I'm in the white hole phase, so uh, by the argument I just gave you, classical GR, possibly with small corrections, applies. And I look what classical GR tells me about the white hole phase, and, and I realize, oh, wow, I, should, I shouldn't like, just uh, let the white hole flow and explode. Uh, I should apply the instability results. Uh, and if so, uh, the white hole phase will be comparatively brief and it will be followed by gravitational recollapse, so to speak. And if so, the life of a, of a black hole looks kind of like this. We have formation uh, in the collapse. We have uh, evaporation phase, uh, full, fully quantum gravitational brief phase. That leads to tunneling. We have a white hole phase. But then the system collapses into black hole very quickly afterwards, which is again followed by the semi-classical evaporation, and so on and on. So uh, if that's right, then uh, your system kind of oscillates between black and white hole states through this interpolating additional region. Mm. And this oscillatory models has a few interesting consequences. So uh, the first is that you do not have a burst kind of signal that uh, um, Carlo Velli and Francesco Vidotto expect because most of the white hole mass and the, also the expanding shell will be captured, uh, again, in the black hole uh, recollapse phase. Uh, but you have something. So uh, uh, 
Um, depending on whether we are in the black or white hole phase, uh, objects close to the horizons will be red shifted or blue shifted. So we will get some sort of oscillations between <coughs> red and blue shift depending <coughs> on whether we're in a black or white hole phase. And another thing is that relative time spent in black and white hole phase, uh, phases will vary depending on the proportion of mass emitted through Hawking radiation and the amount of mass in the exterior because it seems like those uh, instability results are primarily driven uh, by uh, the mass in the exterior. <coughs> and uh, if all of this is right, then uh, I think under black and white hole oscillations, uh, you do not really have any successful singularity resolution. At least in the following sense, what happens here is that effectively we patch together an infinite sequence of metrics, uh, black hole metric, white hole metric, black hole metric, and so on, through additional interpolating region R. And so no matter how far to the future in space time you go, there will always be very close to you uh, something which effectively looks like a singularity. Uh, and so, uh, I guess the upshot of all of this is that if you have a black hole fireworks uh, model taking into account the white hole instability, that there is a sense in which uh, you do not have a successful similarity resolution for late stage of black hole evaporation. And that's it. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yeah. First, I wanted to well, thanks everybody. Thanks the organizer. It was a really well organized conference. Thanks, Julius. Thanks. So, um, before I start, if I may say, uh, basically, one uh, recommendation for this type of, of, of work, which is helpful, is is to write uh, fine uh, not fine diagrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have done that. So, if I may, can I? Can I? And then I'll, I'll go back to this. Let me get the radio mic so we can hear you. Uh. Is this on? Uh, is this on? Yes, yes. Right. So, you know, if, if you're talking just classically, you could have written, you could have, so this is usually right, a standard. Penrose diagram for a black hole. And what happens is you have, let's say you have some collapsing shell of matter, and this is the trajectory of the collapsing shell of matter, right? <coughs> now, a time reversal version of this, you could draw just, I mean, just a very naive thing, yeah. which is <coughs> sometimes difficult. <coughs> and, okay. So this already helps us uh, think of some of the things. So here, you can't really get out of a black hole. Here, you can't really get in. <laughs> and uh, so, okay. So this is just to have in, in the background. I, I, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to ask you, which wasn't really clear to me, is when are you in the classical regime or in the quantum regime? Because the singularity resolution Part is in the quantum regime, and the right. thermodynamics, for example, it's you, semi-classical. It's semi-classical, yeah. and um, so, for instance, some objections to indeterminism and no second law, etc., they usually depend on quantum effects. So they depend on singularity right. avoidance and evaporation, and you know, there's still the, the discussion right. about unitarity. So would yeah. it be reversible? Another question that I would have is. You said that the asymmetrical emission conditions, that it's not the same for a black hole, white hole, as it would be the explanation for the asymmetry between retarded and advanced pot potentials, for example. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is what wasn't very clear to me why this would be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing is that. Um, so you say that the white holes, they are not, they're unstable from perturbations. Yeah. But, uh, so they, 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 they turn into black holes. But isn't this a time asymmetric process in itself? 
Oh, I, I think it's very tricky whether it's time asymmetric or not. I, I think, uh, mm, so uh, how one could think about it is, um, uh, so I guess the more general question is whether when, whenever you have a stability result and proven for a process which goes from here to the future and you have time reversal symmetry, do you have the right to assume stability for the time reversed version of the process? And I think in general you just cannot apply. You cannot, I think in general stability results do not carry over to time reversal. Um, uh, I, I just I was trying to think of uh, what would be a right. time reversal effect for, for a black hole in that mm -hmm. sense that I can use. Right. So, so uh, I mean, so, so agreement, there, there's widespread agreement in the GR literature that whereas black holes are stable against small perturbations, the white holes are not. Right, but your argument was based on using time symmetry of the solutions of GR, of classical GR. Right. Mm -hmm. The one thing is abstract for the time reversal. Yeah. Is the right. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. So, 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 so in the sense, you can have a solution uh, here uh, which is stable as you go to the future, but as you time reverse it, it will in general not be stable. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so, and the last thing is the. the, the the oscillation. This I, I have to say I, I didn't really understand. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so, so I think I can. Because, so let me just say. So the, the point is 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 that the universe is not in a box. Right? Things right. have escape velocity. Yeah. So here, if you think of the collapse, mm -hmm. something is this shell of matter here just going in. Yeah. And what you're thinking, I think, roughly in this case, would be identifying this with that. Yeah. So even if you do think that it blows up and somehow, and I think actually the figure if you have the, mm -hmm. the full figure that people have is roughly yeah. something more yeah. like this. But here you see clearly you know, that this shell, if it exits this white hole, it would have escape velocity. Mm -hmm. So it would go to the time, right. mm -hmm. the future time. Right. So, uh, uh, so uh, let, let me try to let me start by make a bit of a mess of this diagram. So uh, as you said, this is what the diagram usually looks like when you put it in the literature. You kind of remove this, remove this, with this, and you have something uh, here. Now, uh, uh, so uh, on this diagram, well, this, this doesn't this diagram doesn't really take evaporation into account because you kind of take it sort of here. Right? Right, so this, um, if I did this, would be more like this. In the end, I would have something like this. Yeah. And this. Right, but there is uh, <coughs> right. Yeah. 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 So now, uh, mm, um, one of the questions was, uh, so what is what is classical, what is semi-classical, and what is fully quantum in this picture? So if I have a diagram like this, uh, this is fully classical because that's just a classical collapse. And okay. at some point here, uh, I will have the additional evaporation stage like this, so that's in classical. And then uh, what uh, Rovelli and others are doing is um, they follow that stage. Hey, Julius, this one's a little better. OK, thanks. So they follow uh, the evaporation stage with this. So this is fully, fully quantum for them. And now you kind of put this analogous to, to, to the figure. Mm -hmm. uh, so then uh, uh, I think I should try to control this idea that black holes funnel into white holes at two levels. So uh, uh, you could say, oh, no, 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 I don't really trust this idea because once well, I'm kind of between classical and fully, fully quantum phase, uh, I will have some classical effects and all the thermodynamical, thermodynamic related issues. And I could try to use that to somehow constrain the future evolution of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so if somebody 
try to uh, invoke something like generalized second law, uh, that would be uh, presumably the stage where it would happen. I don't understand. Uh, my, my, my question is simple. Is why the, the, the blowing up? Why does it not have this? The, why doesn't it have oh. this behavior? Why doesn't it like the analogies of escape velocity? Right. So, so in general, it would have. Uh, but if you can assume that you have some, uh, you know, non-zero perturbation on in the outside, uh, then you can apply the white right instability as well. So. Uh, so perhaps one way of saying what happens is that uh, if you if you in a white hole space time and everything is uh, um, is just perfect asymptotic plasma and perturbations, then you do not have instability, strictly speaking, because instability is not driven by anything emerging from the white hole itself, so to speak. Instability is driven by uh, external content which forms accretion disk around the white hole. So this is something you can really, uh, in such an obvious way, draw on the federal diagram. But so basically what happens is, so here we have, let's not have the just white hole part of the diagram. So uh, we are still, assume that we are kind of still, so before the shot emerges. And we have some other content here. This is a free run to that. And then we will have here and uh, uh, it's a little bit hard to draw, but at some point in here, before the um, shell is dead, uh, you will start to have photic impact, and that will kind of recapture the emerging shell and capture the space uh, in, in the black hole. Does that help? For the for the instability result in classical at the classical level. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, I, I just would have to think about, because my, I thought your arguments were, were based on this time symmetry, and I was just trying to think about something in a very, perhaps right. too straightforward time symmetry question. So maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is why I stressed uh, at some point that uh, it's a dynamical effect in the sense that it's driven by external content. But it, it's, it's a bit confusing part, so early himself, who was the first one to demonstrate white hole instability, was actually confused about <coughs> the reason for white hole instability. Uh, he thought it has to do with something with infinite blue shifts uh, you get in white hole space time. It's only subsequent analysis which has shown that it's really external content which, which drives that. Uh, so, right, so, so this, is, this is not, uh, the in that sense, instability is not, strictly speaking, something we get by time reversal environment or anything like that. It's something we get by including additional uh, sort of dynamical effects that depend on the interaction of the white hole in the environment, so to speak. Uh, and uh, I thought the, so, so uh, uh, I think I asked the question about instability, about what is classical of quantum in the picture. Um, there was right. something else. Yes. Oh, advanced and retarded photon shells. Julius, can you hold the microphone a little Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Right, so, so I think this is slightly different than advanced and retarded photon shells in the following sense. So when we have advanced and retarded photon shells, we can use uh, a certain function or time reverse to describe like one and the same physical situation, right? So then the question is, okay, so I have two equivalent choices, kind of causation going from the past, causation going from the future. Describe one and the same physical system. Uh, and this is not what, uh, what is going on in the case of asymmetry between black and white holes in classical GR. Because asymmetry between black and white holes is rather about, uh, mm, it's not about alternative descriptions of one and the same physical situation, but it's about uh, the question why even though uh, Einstein's equations are time symmetric, roughly speaking, uh, half of uh, the solutions, so uh, all the white holes ones, do not have kind of mm, capacity to uh, represent stuff around that. Right, so, so, that so even though we have certain symmetry at the level of the equations, we do not really have it at the level of the solutions, which. But usually, we explain around. that from 
initial conditions, right, from special initial conditions. So right. why mm -hmm. you're saying that that is not a good explanation for the white hole, the black hole? Well, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying it's not a good explanation, but all I'm saying is that it's very different from advancing retarded potential, where we did, I don't think you really can invoke uh, initial conditions to break time symmetry. Because the system is equally well described by advanced or retarded potential, uh, no matter what initial conditions you take. So in, in that sense, I think it's different. So it's the same to have a classical system for which the initial conditions do not determine who is able. So I mean, are you, are you, are you yeah, finished, yeah. Okay, so let's move yeah. the questions. I do have Daniel first. Yeah. Let's get the microphone over there, and then uh, and then Tony on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so, can I answer before you ask the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, of course, in classical GR, we have multiple situations where given initial values do not determine future evolution. Mm. Right. So, very simple example is Misner space time. Well, 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 well. So I, I give you an achronal subset, and I tell you, you oh, know, you and all of subset. that. No, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You give me subsets, I understand, of course. If you give me subsets, right. you have not determined the, the proof. If you give, give me Cauchy data on a whole Cauchy surface, then you have completely determined. Oh, but then you you do have it by assumption that it is Cauchy. <laughs> Your space time could be maximal globally hyperbolic, but admit non unique extensions. Right? That's fine. But is that what's going on here? Um, but okay, let mm -hmm. me get to my, my, to, to mm -hmm. my comments before you ask the question. All right, break that you symmetry. Said, you, you said that you know, the calculations mm -hmm. have been done with the Schwarzschild black hole, but we expect them to be fully generalized. Right? Oh, uh, well, in which the symmetry, spherical symmetry doesn't play a fundamental role in the... In the black hole fireworks? In the, yeah. Well, uh, I should kind of backtrack myself. So I do not have, it's not my favorite uh, account for singularity resolution or anything like that. I just I think it's interesting. I think that people who work on it expect that it will work at least to pair uh, type black holes. Uh, sure. uh, because if not, it's rather bad. Uh, and yeah, but I think they would expect that to also generalize to non-spherically symmetric situations. But as we know, gravitational collapse in non-spherically symmetric situations is difficult in general. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 So, so, so I, I, I think they, they will expect that the whole scheme generalizes to rotating and non-spherically symmetric situations from, like. From what I've seen, from what I've seen on this uh, treatment, uh, the, the, the spherical symmetry plays a role in there being able to, to, to have things under control. But if you are correct and they are correct and things generalize, mm -hmm. uh, the calculation does not depend on the formation of a, of a mm. horizon. The, 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 mm -hmm. the horizon plays no role in the calculation. So, this, so if that the calculation is trustworthy, any situation of this of a similar kind should have similar probabilities of turning into its time reverse mm -hmm. portion. So two trucks that are heading mm -hmm. to each other yeah. during the road and are about to collapse, yeah. about to collide, should yeah. have a very probable the similar probability of turning mm -hmm. into the two trucks heading back to their original uh, yeah, that sources. Yeah, that's on track. And, and in that sense, mm -hmm. since I think that probability is extremely low, mm -hmm. the same goes for things of this sort. Mm -hmm. Judith, do you want to respond before? Um, no, please go on. <laughs> No, I, I, I mean, if it's a if it's a follow-up. It's related, but you can. You know, you no, don't go, go. Go. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, all right. So, so uh, yeah. So I know that there are some estimates of uh, probability of 
explosion and whether uh, kind of the black hole tunnels quickly and otherwise that it, it, it's supposed to stay black for forever. Uh, but I don't really trust the probability measures involved personally. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm just, I just don't think that there, uh, uh, I, I, I guess I just don't trust the physical significance of probability measures involved in estimations of that uh, on general grounds. So that would be my answer. Enrique, I do have a queue, so can it be yeah. very, very short? Or? Very, very short. Please let him, he's my, he's my, my commenter. <laughs> of the tractor and repulsion. But the, the difference is here that I agree with you in the sense, but then the repulsion shouldn't go to a black hole. Right? I mean, what is attracted to a black hole is not coming from a white hole. Usually. Oh, well, then you just say it's the universal. Right. The white hole can be unstable, but I don't see why it would be unstable in the sense of forming a black hole, which is what they're saying. Ah, well, yeah, that's a different. Yeah, mm. I agree with you. Okay. Right. I think in that sense it seems. Like no, 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 no. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> I, I guess my general comment on this is that, as you see, there are uh, multiple tricky questions raised in foundations of physics by objects such as white holes, and thinking about time reversal invariance <laughs> of all of this is really, really non-trivial. Yeah, I think that's what the discussion shows. <laughs> okay, Antonio. Uh, in your talk, you asked for some uh, argument uh, in order to see, I don't know, why all the splitters that mm -hmm. But I would say that this kind of phenomena would have some unpleasant non-local character. Because um, um, let's uh, consider a very well-believed cosmological model, the uh, Friedman mm -hmm. Let's consider a black hole uh, merger. Okay? Mm -hmm. In that case, uh, the, uh, the process is very well-being. You have something that happens in a region of space-time. You have uh, and uh, production of energy in the form of uh, uh, gravitational waves. Uh, those waves travel uh, mm -hmm. uh, outside uh, to infinity. They eventually hit uh, other masses, etc. So they propagate the energy in uh, the yeah. finite amount of time. Mm -hmm. In the case of a white hole uh, splitter, things become really right. awkward. Because right. there, there's before like the splitting takes place, uh, in very far, far away regions of mm -hmm. space-time, uh, matter uh, starts to lose energy, okay? Right. And then all this energy lost from very uh, yeah. far outside yeah. regions tend to propagate uh, yeah. in the yeah. same point, and then uh, yeah. when they just uh, uh, converge, uh, this uh, splitting uh, happens. That's right. It's almost conspiratorial in a sense, right? That's really unpleasant. Yeah. Yes, I know. I would say it's again the spirit, yeah. against <laughs> the, the local spirit of a fluid view. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, it's just waves riding backwards. So in that sense, but I, 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 I think I shared this feeling that there is something strange going on. We know why waves would be emitted from major events, but why on Earth, before the splitter event, they would converge in such a way? I think this is, this is mysterious. So, I mean, probably in, those, in the cases people are really interested in, like primordial uh, evaporating black holes and stuff like that, they could say, well, look, there's, you know, there's also the environment, so this environment will somehow prevent the, uh, the analog of converging waves. Uh, but that just seems contingent to me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I agree that there is something something strange about about this. But I guess I mean we could in principle try to. Yeah. All right, Chris. Right. No, so, so, so that's why I think that it's, it's really oscillations which, which are interesting. And the, the splitters is it's a certain uh, curious artifact of time symmetry. And it's fun to think about, but I wouldn't expect it to happen in real life or anything like that. But it's still it's conceptually interesting. Just 
Can I quick remark before my question? I can, I, I think, completely clarify the way in which, in a completely deterministic case, you can have green slime emerging from a white hole. So there's nothing inconsistent going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, my question really is uh, with the black white hole oscillation cases, mm -hmm. you can introduce, it seems to me, an additional form of indeterminism. Uh -huh. Because what would stop the thing from you know, oscillating 17 times and on the 18th cycle, somehow you know, enough stuff has escape velocity and goes away, right. and there's no right. collapse into the black hole. That something like mm -hmm. that should be possible if it's time reversal. Uh, mm -hmm. It's obvious from the fact that even if you mm -hmm. have a future infinitely long sequence right. of oscillations, if right. it's past finite, you flip that around, you can have sort of from past right. infinity I have mm -hmm. oscillations that terminate mm -hmm. at some point. You can have uh, mm -hmm. 17 cycle oscillations, yeah, etc., yeah, yeah. and all sorts of things <coughs> like that. Right, that's a very good, yeah, absolutely. So I, I think what happens is that it really, um, so um, mm, in both in instability, in, in, in case of white hole instability and in case of black hole fireworks, uh, this depends on the amount of mass that you have. Uh, so uh, first, the black hole has to evaporate a certain amount of mass before we can apply the white hole, uh, b before we can apply the black hole fireworks. So certain proportion needs to be lost through Hawking radiation. And now uh, another thing is that we can, if we can assume that practically speaking all of the, in the kind of, uh, in the instability result, let's assume that all of the mass of the white holes gets uh, captured by the subsequent black hole. So now, uh, but since the uh, instability is driven by uh, external content, so that's something you will have to add uh, to the mass of the kind of second black hole in the cycle. Right? So then what happens is that essentially uh, uh, both the, the collapse uh, of a white hole to black hole depends on the external content, and the tunneling depends on, uh, uh, you, you need to lose certain proportion of mass. And so uh, this kind of determines, uh, uh, given how much you have lost in the, at the first stage and how much you got at the end of the first stage, this will determine the mass of the second black hole. And depending on uh, kind of uh, whether these values are approximately equal in kind of all uh, pieces of the oscillating cycle or not, you will have different effects. And I think you're absolutely right that we can suspect that if we gain just a little bit, but we lose a lot every time, then at some point, uh, mm, the mass will be so small that it will just immediately explode. Sure, but that might still be deterministic if you know that's already determined. Right. The first time things collapse, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. It's just determined already. It's going to cycle for seventeen times, and then. Right. I guess plus the external content. Yeah. Sure. Plus the right. So then the indeterminism. How would it manifest itself exactly? But then it may not be deterministic. Right. So, so I was thinking about this, I, I just realized that I was actually thinking about the um, oscillations I was thinking in deterministic way. So how would I, what would, what would, uh, so, so assume that uh, I'm at the end stage of the cycle, uh, what, what would be alternative futures? I guess in a sense, uh, alternative mm -hmm. futures are not fully determined by what happens here, right? because uh, the cycle is deterministic, but it depends on the external matter content. So if somehow you're in a situation where uh, it's really, really, really very empty, <coughs> so we do not have uh, the accretion disk forming because that's an external effect, and, uh, and then this whole thing will just uh, eject into ordinary matter. So, I, so what I'm saying is that uh, I think uh, it is deterministic if you take into account uh, in future distributions of this uh, additional content here. Does that make sense? We have one more question then. Does that make sense? Um, we have like two or three minutes. So there seems to be some problem why uh, the white hole was unstable, whereas the black hole was stable. Mm -hmm. so I was wondering, could you make an analogy with, like, say, ice cubes here? Ice cubes are going to melt 
speaking loud. You, you do have some perturbation mm -hmm. that converts like water and may spontaneously freeze. Oh. It has to be the right mm -hmm. initial condition. And then any mm -hmm. most external perturbations will just destroy that the process of the uh, uh, yeah. yeah. But I think that that's on a question that every take just because the sick can let, let Julius have a go first. Or but, but if you want to the puzzlement was for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, so I think Enrique's puzzlement was different, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I would be, I think I personally would be very careful in using this sort of analogy because it seems to me that in those cases like ice cubes melting or uh, spontaneously freezing, uh, what ha really happens is that we make recourse to all the I, I, I think the standard way of thinking about this is about relations between macro and micro states. Uh, and I just don't think this is accessible. We, we don't have anything like micro-macro uh, states relations in GR, and this, this I think, makes this asymmetry case also very different from thermodynamical cases. Because it's just that, the, conceptually speaking, the whole thing works very differently. It's more like um, kind of symmetry breaking cases, I think, asymmetry between black and white holes, in the, in the sense that, in the very loose sense that we have symmetry of the equations, which is not somehow not manifest in the solutions of the theory. So it's just in that sense, but it's not micro macro level descriptions we have in thermodynamics. So in that sense, I think actually uh, time reversal in parallel since GR it's kind of qualitatively a uh, new problem. Enrique, did you just want to make one last comment on this? Very quick, just to be clear, my problem wasn't that it's unstable per se, or stable, but that it's unstable in a way that will form a black hole. Yeah. So it, it's this, I think, which is asymmetric, which is not the time I agree with Daniel that one isn't attracted, the other is a repulsive, but I don't see why the repulsive is. Maybe it does not one way to say it for me. I just want to wonder if there was just an analogy or not. Julius, a final word? <coughs> um, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> How, how paradoxical. <laughs> no, I, I mean, um, yeah, I think. Uh, All right, so let's say it. thank, thank you, you very much. So, we'll, we'll try and start at, let's say, 11.